What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got a major patch for Helldivers 2. In this video though we are just going to key highlight some of the major changes and then later on I'll have another video up where we've completely tested every single one of these changes and given you the results on that. We'll have that either later tonight if not tomorrow morning but if you have any questions about some of these changes and you don't want to have to wait for that video head over to the link down in the description below follow me over at twitch you can ask me any of these questions while we're live streaming and getting some of these changes tested so if you want that information a little bit earlier just head on over there but on that note we've got more than a few things to cover so let's jump straight into it now starting off we've got a bit of an buff to armor which is going to be anything above armor rating 100 so that means Anything that's medium or heavy armor has reduced damage on headshots. Hopefully this makes it a bit more impactful for utilizing these and makes it a little bit more tanky, especially against some of those hunters that turn into head crabs. Being able to get those critical hits on your head can sometimes be extremely devastating and it only takes one of them jumping one time to sometimes instantly delete you. Very frustrating. But also on top of that, burning damage is reduced by 15%. Hopefully that means we can stop, drop, and roll before we burn to death. If not, just being able to pop a stem before we've actually burned to ash. Nothing more frustrating than that moment. But on top of that, the, the big meat of the entire patch is going to be the primary, secondary, and support weapons. This is the number one thing people are going to want to know about. So we're starting off with the exploding crossbow. This one got a buff and a nerf. We've got a slight decrease to our explosive radius, sadly enough, but we did get increased stagger, muzzle velocities increased, and a reduction to ergonomics, so it's going to be easier to handle, and hopefully with this increased stagger, it actually staggers devastators, and if that's the case, this is going to be my new favorite primary for facing off with the automatons. Now, the number one thing that a lot of people are going to be upset about is the quasar cannon, which is increased recharge time by 5 seconds. Reality is... This isn't going to be that major of a nerf. It's going to be noticeable in the beginning if you've been using the Quasar Cannon quite often, but literally it's a rocket every 15 seconds available for you to fire infinitely. There is nothing too bad about this. It's going to be noticeable in the beginning, but you'll adjust fairly quickly. I'm just going to be real about it. And right after that, we've got the Adjudicator, which is now the Liberator Penetrator we all wanted. It's got the increased damage. It's now an assault rifle. It has reduced recoil. Defaulted to full auto, but you'll still have the semi-auto option and increased number of magazines. More than likely, this may be the assault rifle people have been looking for to kind of trade off compared to the sickle, but that's all going to be up to your personal preference, but more than likely, this is going to be a much better option for an assault rifle now going forward. And right after that, we've got the R12 Blitzer, which has increased shots per minute up from 30 to 45, which brings it in line with the fire rate of the explosive crossbow. Not quite on the level of the pump action shotguns, but somewhere closer to that, just about 30% underneath it. So hopefully this brings this into a more viable option. I know a lot of people were excited about this before it came out, and then it just kind of had this pitfall moment of this thing's terrible. Hopefully just the shots per minute increase is enough to bring this in line to be a more viable primary option. And right after that, we've got the R36 Eruptor, a lot of people's favorite weapon. They didn't want this to get nerfed, but thankfully it's gotten nerfed in a way that doesn't decrease its total damage output. Now, the, it does have a decreased number of magazines to it now, down from 12 to 6. Trust me, you're not going to be burning through 6 magazines all that quickly, especially with this rate of fire, and more than likely you never did truly do that that often before, unless you were just literally reloading when you shouldn't have. But that's all going to be up to your personal playstyle. But on top of that, the explosion damage drops off slightly faster. That means that the further out that that shrapnel goes, the quicker it's going to have a damage drop off now. So in the instances where you're facing off with tightly grouped enemies or possibly shooting underneath a charger or shooting towards one of those heavily armored tanks just underneath the backside, you're still going to have that explosive damage you had before. But now when it comes to not as tightly grouped enemies and Hitting enemies further away with some of that shrapnel, it may have a decreased effect in total damage against them, but more than likely still has that stagger power that it had before. So the Eruptor got a little bit of a nerf, but this thing is by no means put into the ground. It's still rocking. And the Sickle did get a little bit of a nerf, but it's only decreased by three magazines. Infinite ammo, nothing going wrong with that one. But let's talk about the Railgun real quick. This got a buff and possibly a major nerf in my personal opinion. Now it does have increased armor penetration in both safe mode and unsafe mode. Now the safe mode, I think this means that it now has heavy armor penetration, but without the increased damage of unsafe mode. When it comes to unsafe mode having increased armor penetration, I guess that means it's dealing more damage now towards heavily armored targets, considering there's nothing past heavy armor. Maybe it's just a part of the armor penetration points in the stats that we don't see. 
So maybe that affects how much total damage it can actually implement in those moments. So that should be interesting. Maybe this is actually a buff to unsafe modes total damage output. But the thing that I say that could be a major nerf is the stagger force is slightly reduced. I'm not a huge fan of this considering one of the biggest viable things about the railgun for me when facing a Hulk was I could shoot it anywhere on the body and as long as it was penetrating through that heavy armor, it would stagger them every time. If I've lost the capability of doing that, that is a huge nerf in my opinion and that further decreases the viability for me. It's nice to be able to one-shot them, but it was even nicer that if I didn't land that shot but I still had it in unsafe mode, even after the nerf, I could still stagger them, stop those flame hooks... Bleh. Stop those flame hulks from firing, if not any one of those other rockets from firing as well. And this could save teammates and could save your own life, but without that, that's a bit of a nerf in my opinion, but that's me. Now right after that, the heavy machine gun did get a, I guess a buff, which is weird, even though it now just has a third person crosshair enabled. Hopefully this means that now with the changes to the crossbow and now with the heavy machine gun, I could possibly have a viable Rambo build to go in with. Tried it several times before, just was no fun, didn't really work all that well. But with the stagger now possible, and now being able to fire from the hip with the heavy machine gun, maybe it has a bit more viability and could actually work out and be fun. So we'll see in the coming future. So hit that subscribe button, we've got probably more loadouts coming in the future, but right after that, the Diligence Counter Sniper may be a strong viable option against the Automatons now. It was already one-shotting Devastators if you hit them in the weak spot, but it's had its damage increased up to 140 and its ergonomics improved, so this means that more than likely it has much better handling, it more than likely will feel better to fire this, and probably be a bit easier to land some of those headshots. So if you're somebody that is looking for a Marksman Rifle, the Diligence Counter Sniper may be in line for being a viable primary in that category for you now. And when it comes down to the secondaries, the most number one thing to highlight is the Senator. This thing may be an absolute powerhouse now. This was something that I considered a meme weapon before because of its reload, but not only has it increased the damage up to 175 now, but it now has a speed loader when you empty the cylinder. And I'm not sure 100% what this means just yet. I haven't tested it, but I believe... It's very possible that they went with the, uh, you know, the real, real life aspect of possibly as soon as you've depleted that, you've just got a six loader ready to just pop in there and be able to just instantly start firing off. And with how quickly this thing can fire, it's very easy to deplete that and then just have, if we have a fast reload right after that, this is going to be an absolute powerhouse. So this is something I can't wait to test out. A lot of people are more than likely going to love this as there was definitely a lot of people that loved the Senator before and now it is a much more viable option. Now on top of that, the Liberator and the Liberator Concussive, not the Liberator Penetrator, did get a buff. The Liberator by 5 damage, so it has a little bit more punch to it with an AR, and the Liberator Concussive by 10 damage, but sadly enough that thing still has that slow rate of fire, but hopefully 10 damage can make the difference, as the Liberator Concussive was decent at Terminid because you could bully the bugs with it. It had very strong stagger. You, I mean, you could just push bugs back all day long, but before, that's basically all you could do. You would be burning through magazines just trying to kill things, but all you do is just keep pushing them back. It's a little bit ridiculous. But hopefully this makes it a little bit better. But right after that, the Jar 5 Dominator, a lot of people's personal favorite, I still love it, did get a nerf by 25 damage, but don't worry, this thing is still hitting as hard as it did before. It's still got the stagger. You're still one-shotting devastators with this. The only place that you're going to notice this damage decrease is versus something like a charger, a heavily armored tank. Hitting those in the weak spot just may take longer or a few more shots, but that's the only time you'll notice that 25 damage reduction. Everything else is still going to be getting dominated by the dominator. And apparently the guard dog, I, I suppose both the rover and the liberator version has decreased damage by 30%. Not a huge fan of this, but more than likely rover's still going to be getting the job done. Trust me, he's got 100% uptime. He's still lasering all of those enemies around you. He's still going to be probably one of the better options at crowd control. 30% damage reduction, it just means he's not going to be dealing as much damage towards some of those medium type enemies. And we did get the airburst rocket launcher, uh buff quotations we'll see if this is actually worthwhile i'm still really on the fence about this support weapon but the airburst rocket launcher will no longer detonate when you shoot near stratagems such as the hmg turret sentries resupplies crazy enough and other hell divers and its reduced proximity radius 
I'm going to be real. I had more problems than just this thing exploding in my face. There were several times where I was able to test this once I was able to land the shot properly towards a group of enemies and it did not seem like it was doing a whole lot. I thought this was also going to get a buff to damage slash possibly like the way that the clusters dropped. But who knows? Maybe this is enough. Maybe there's also stealth buffs that we don't notice here that could be improving that airburst rocket launcher. But still a lot of testing to do with this one. We'll have that video coming up here in the next couple of days as well, where we just focus on that Airbus rocket by itself. Now, beyond that, we do have some enemy changes like the bile, spur, bleh, bile spewer and nursing spewer. Move speed slightly reduced. Hulk's got a little bit of a buff that force required for them to stagger slightly increased. Now, I'm not sure whether or not this is a double whammy that really kind of like hammers down on what I thought about the nerf to the railgun whether or not that's further causing it to not be able to stagger hulks but i believe this may be due to the fact of like dominator or some of the primary weapons being able to hit that weak spot and easily be able to stagger them or possibly this could be something that reduces the capability of something like the arc thrower being able to stagger as easy towards those hulks i hope that's not the case but we'll be testing that shortly but on top of that hulk scorchers the flame hulk did get a little bit of a nerf with the damage reduced by 20%, which hopefully this is enough to stop me from getting like 0.1 second of getting hit with flame instantly death. There's nothing more frustrating than that, and hopefully 20% is enough to stop that from happening towards me, but we'll see as we test this in the coming future. On top of that, Scout Strider uh, Riders, good guy, that's a mouthful right there, now less vulnerable to explosions. Hopefully this means that... Uh, you know, we can still blow them off, but th this may mean that Scorcher and some of those other primaries are not going to be able to blow off those riders behind as easily. So we may have to start working with some other options. This may make fighting the automatons a little bit harder. Hopefully the Airbus rocket launcher can compensate for some of these moments. But on top of that, solo play has truly been nerfed. It is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say it for some of those people out there that have been doing that solo. Patrol spawning has been increased when there are fewer than four players and it just gets worse the less players you have. Hopefully this doesn't become a detriment to some of those people that end up, you know, two and three man. Because that would be really irritating if we just had somebody quit and the next thing you know, things just got harder for no reason. But, I mean, their focus is to try and get, you know, group play going constantly, get people in four players. And if you do want to play solo, uh, phew, apparently now it's like uh, you're on a true suicide mission even though you're going to be in hell dive difficulty. But this should be interesting. I will be testing this in the coming future, but we'll see about that. But on top of that, there are only a couple more changes to talk about, which is going to be the fix to superior packing methodology ship module not working properly. This is one of those new ship modules that we got, which a lot of them apparently were not working properly. Superior packing methodology. This could be an absolute powerhouse now that this is fixed. I'm going to be testing this out. Anytime that you have like a recoil, it's the auto cannon. If you have a buddy that has the backpack on them, and then if you put a supply pack on yourself while you're carrying the recoil list or any one of those that is backpack loaded, it's possible with that, with this uh, superior packing methodology that you can completely deplete their backpack, turn around, give them one of those supply packs off your back, fully load that backpack and be able to just dump auto cannon or recoil list or spear any number of those. I mean, I feel like that is going to be an absolute powerhouse combination right there. And it's going to make the supply pack way more valuable. But on top of that, we did get a fix to the blast absorption ship module. I knew this one wasn't working, but they didn't confirm this one in any one of their patch notes or on the Discord. But this was the one that increased the century's resistance to explosions by 50%. I tested this one and rocket devastators, one rocket was exploding every time. I was super mad about this one because this was one of the first ones that I bought up from the ship modules as I thought, ooh, I can finally use sentries against automatons, but that didn't end up being the case. But thankfully, we now have the capability of, in the future, having a loadout that can be fully sentry heavy versus the automaton. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be putting one of those best sentry loadouts for facing off with the automatons. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is the fixed issue with the sickle and the quasar cannon that could not shoot through foliage. They can finally shoot through foliage grass any type of leaves or anything like that it's not going to stop you anymore you'll be able to shoot straight through them you won't have to reposition to get some of those shots lined up so be happy about that one but that's going to be it for right now that's all the key highlighted 
changes right now for the patch. We'll have that later on, full detailed tested uh, video coming up later on. So if you'd like to see that in the coming future, hit that subscribe button. But at the same time, if you'd like to see some of this content live, or if you have any questions about some of these or what has happened, whether or not this is working or that's a beneficial change, just hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be doing all of these. Head on over, ask any questions you like. Also, leave a comment down below. How do you feel about some of these changes? Have some of your weapons been decreased or increased when it comes to their viability? What are you looking forward to actually testing out or trying out? Let me know down below. But on that note, have a good one.